This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSP-TV and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. For your information, we talk with two women who hold a special event every year to remember their loved ones. Welcome to FYI News 13. I'm Ken Kara. Thank you for watching on SSPTV and SSPTV.com. Here's Monday's headlines from FYI and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. We begin with a search for a missing boy from Carbon County. According to the Allentown Morning Call and our media partner, the Standard Speaker, state police are looking for 12-year-old Nathan Polchinski of Jim Thorpe. He was last seen behind his home on Center Avenue in Jim Thorpe between 7:10 and 7:30 this morning. Mason was wearing dark pants, a dark shirt, and blue frame glasses. He is described as about 4 feet 4 inches tall and 80 pounds with red hair. If you see him, call 911 immediately. A new report by Pennsylvania State Coroner's Association lists Luzerne County as having the highest number of drug overdose deaths in the Northeast region last year. According to the report, Luzerne County had 67 deaths. Monroe County was second with 39 deaths. Lackawanna County was third with 30. State government does not keep statistics, triggering the Coroner's Association to compile its own. Nearly 2,500 people died throughout the state of Pennsylvania from drug-related causes last year. However, that number does not reflect 13 counties, including Schuylkill County that did not take part in the voluntary effort to collect data. Hazelton police were dispatched to an early morning disturbance yesterday in the area of East Diamond Avenue. According to police, two bail enforcement agents attempted to enter an establishment with black masks to take a wanted person into custody. The agents, who did not properly identify themselves, were pushed out and hit by bottles. Police are investigating. Hazel and the police are also investigating a report of shots fired over the weekend. It happened Sunday around 9 p.m. in the area of 7th and Vine Street. According to police, an unknown male entered through the backyard while residents were holding a family gathering. The male fired approximately five shots prior to fleeing on foot. There were no reported injuries. Anyone with information is asked to contact Hazelton Police at 570-459-4940 or by dialing 911. Well, on Friday, we told you that a ribbon was cut on a new medical facility in the Valley. The Lehigh Valley Physician Group offers both internal medicine and pediatrics. Dr. Jody Lenko is from the Hazleton area and is following in her father's footsteps. While Dr. Alvaro Raimonde is new to the area, I spoke with both of them and the mayor of Cunningham about this new medical practice. And this is a great asset to the Valley. Um, this is just a wonderful place to be able to stop here for both care of pediatrics, which I will use because this is where I will take my kids, um, and also for adult medicine. There's not too many other internists or family practice sites down in the Valley. So to have this um, post out here a little bit away from the city is great. It's a really um, nice, nice way to extend the Lehigh Valley network down into this area. I'm really excited to be here. I came straight from Puerto Rico, so I'm, I'm, Spanish is my first language. and um, very excited to work here. Uh, there's a huge Spanish community, and in this fabulous location, I'm really excited to come down here as well. Finally, Cunningham's back with a pediatric center. Uh, you know, when my kids were small, we used to go down to Lantern Lane, and Dr. Childs and Dr. Caggiano took care, of, took care of my kids when they were tiny. And, uh, then we had to go up all the way to the other end of Hazleton, so people in the valley should be really, really proud and real happy to have this place come here. The new practice is located at 642 Brook Hill Square on Route 93 in Sugarloaf Township. It's an annual event to raise awareness of a debilitating disease. FYI's Lisa Sugart has the details. Saturday, May 16th marks the fifth annual Bloomsburg Jorge's Walk to defeat ALS. And with me now are two of the ladies who make this annual walk possible. To my immediate right is Rosalba Snyder, the chair of the Bloomsburg Walk. And to my left is Mandy Padell, who is the co-chair. Mandy, I'm going to start with you. For anyone who is not familiar with ALS, what exactly is it? So ALS is a motor neuron disease, also known as Lou Gehrig's um, People are more familiar with that name. It's a disease that causes patients to lose control of their voluntary muscles, uh, eventually leading to paralysis. It is a terminal disease, and it is uh, more common than most people realize. Absolutely. And Rosa, you started this walk. Both of you have family members that were affected by this. So you started this walk because of your dad. Yes. He was diagnosed with ALS. Um, nine months later, he passed away. 
so I wanted this, uh, to do a walk, um, one, because the ALS Association was very helpful. Um, and other, another reason was uh, so everybody that is affected with ALS uh, can come together that one day and we can just share our story, laugh, cry, or just a, like a family reunion. So. And Mandy, I know it was your brother that was affected with ALS. Yes, he uh, was 26 years old when he passed away, and ALS is typically a, a middle-aged disease, so 40 to 60 is the median age, but it does affect older and younger people as well. Um, and similar to Rosa, it was very quick from onset to when he passed away. Wow, so this is really a terrible disease affecting many people. Now the walk. It's the 2015 walk on May 16th. So tell people how they can get involved. Well, they can um, register online at ALSPhiladelphia.org. Um, they can contact me at fightingals at hotmail.com. Um, and it's, it's a free event. Um, they can just come and walk and enjoy the free food, the free entertainment. And this year, because it is our fifth year, um, we are having an after party with free entertainment. All right, so now the actual day of the walk, the registration starts at 9 a.m. and then the walk? At 10.30 on May 16th. And what would you say has been the result of this walk going on now in its fifth year? What, what has been the success of it? Oh, we've raised quite a bit of uh, money for patient services and the competitive edge research um, but mostly it's raising awareness and people that are affected like I said we can just be together and not feel alone all right well very well said we hope you will all get involved again the walk taking place Saturday May 16th registration is 9 a.m. the walk is at 1030 and this is at the Bloomsburg Park yes the Bloomsburg Town Park we hope you'll come out and support this very worthy cause. Thank you very much, Lisa, for that interview. Well, coming up next on FYI, there's a bit of a cool down coming our way. We have the details and the full forecast coming up. And later, it's Mon Monday and Ronnie is ranting. Stay tuned for Trivia Treats. This is FYI News 13, brought to you by SSPTV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. Monday and I'm Christy and this is Kim. Welcome back to Core Fitness. It's Fitness Monday. So today I thought we would show you a quick partner workout that you can do with a friend. Um, so we're going to show you three exercises. You're going to perform each exercise for 30 seconds. You're going to take a 15 second rest and you're going to perform that set three times. Okay. So I'm going to apologize beforehand if you hear me gasping for air. I have my microphone on. So we're going to get started. And the first exercise we're going to do is a squat with a crescent kick. So Kim's going to turn around. She's going to go down into a squat position. And that's her role here until it's her turn. I'm going to squat down, and I'm going to crescent kick over her head. All right, sit down in the squat and lift up and kick. Make sure you're breathing. Make sure your abs are engaged. And make sure you're not kicking your partner in the head, OK? My turn. All right. So I'm going to sit down. Kim's a little bit shorter than me, so I have to get down a little bit lower. <laughs> she has to kick a little higher. Nice. Very good. One more. All right. Excellent. So 30 seconds of that per person, OK? 30 seconds per person. Next exercise, we're going to cross. We're going to sit down. We're going to put some tension in our arms. And Kim's going to hop towards me four times. Four, three, two. Now we're going to go back. Four, three, two, and back. Four, three, two, back. One more. Four, three, two, back. We couldn't perform any upper body exercises. <laughs> Last one. If you don't have a medicine ball, you can use a regular ball, a bag of beans, anything that won't break all over your floor. All right? We're going to come down into a squat. I'm going to turn, row it to Kim. Up. Pivot on the outside hip. Up. Exhale, make sure you're breathing. And the partner squats when the other partner gets the ball. So you're always moving. Up. We're going to go to the other side. Got to make sure you do both legs, girls. You don't want to be unbalanced. Down. Up. Nice. Good. One more each. Up. 
down. Excellent. All right, 30 seconds per exercise, three times through. Give it your best, we're already out of breath. All right, let us know what you think. Check us out on Facebook, Core Fitness Hazelton. See you next Monday. Time now for FYI News 13 weather. Trains are cool, the weather recently not cool. It's been very, very hot, and that's probably cool with a lot of people around here. It will start to cool down a little bit later this week, especially at night, but don't panic before we get the facts here. Here's our national weather forecast, or excuse me, our local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, there is a chance of showers and thunderstorms, mainly before 8 p.m. Cloudy with a low around 60 degrees, south wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. There's a 30% chance of rain. Here's your extended forecast. Tuesday, a chance of showers and thunderstorms, cloudy through mid-morning and then gradually clearing, high near 76 degrees. And then on Tuesday night, it looks pretty cool, 44 degrees, partly cloudy, west wind 14 to 18 miles per hour. Wednesday, partly sunny with a high near 63, wind gusts as high 15 miles per hour. Wednesday night, mostly clear with a low around 41 degrees. Thursday will be sunny with a high near 63, Thursday night partly cloudy with a low of 43 degrees. Friday will be partly sunny with a high near 65 degrees and Friday night mostly cloudy warms up at night a little bit our low will be 50 degrees. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Valley High the area's oldest ice cream and fast food restaurant. Stop on in for a cold treat including our ice cream and yogurt or some hot food including our burgers hot dogs fries and much more. That's Valley High Route 93 in West Hazleton. Treat yourself today. And now here's your midday winning lottery numbers from the Pennsylvania Lottery. Pick 2, 7, 6, pick 3, 7, 8, 2, pick 4, 9, 9, 9, 2, and pick 5, 0, 8, 8, 5, 2. And lottery numbers here on FYI brought to you by Boyer Insurance Agency. They have two locations to serve you. One is in Nescapec on Broad Street, the other in Cunningham on Sugarloaf Avenue. You can call them in Cunningham at 570-788-3543 and in Nescapec at 570-752-7683. Sports is next on FYI, but first, this message from Friedman Electric. We have a new segment here on FYI on Mondays. We're here at Friedman Electric celebrating 80 years in business. You might recognize this guy, Jerry Katina. And, uh, you know, Jerry, everyone knows you for lighting. And we're here in the showroom to feature all of the nice amenities that you have. So we're going to start with lighting this week and tell everyone how they could save money and shop local. So let's talk about the LED lights. All right. The LEDs that we have now have come a long way. Um, everybody was talking about compact fluorescent years ago. Mm -hmm. Compact fluorescent ends up being an issue because of disposal. Okay. You can't throw them in the garbage. There's mercury in them. LED is not like that. Um, LEDs also rate it depending on between 25 and 50,000 hours, depending on the manufacturer, and they are dimmable. The only thing is that I could tell customers is make sure that when you're purchasing an LED lamp that you speak to a qualified uh, person that's selling them because... If you do not dim them correctly, they will strobe in and out. Now, as you can see here, we have some LEDs, and this is the correct dimmer that's on this, and you can see that it's not in any way, shape, or form flickering. So that's the correct dimmer for that application. Okay, so again, we want to make sure that if you're purchasing the LED lamps that you're talking to, talking to someone who is certified. That is correct. Somebody that knows that they are dimmable. Okay, so we are going to be talking about other amenities here, or I should say features of Friedman Electric, again, celebrating their 80th anniversary, correct? Yes, that is correct. One more thing I forgot to tell you about was we do also have wireless control for your LED. Mm -hmm. This can go right into your router, and you can control it from your smartphone. Very good. There are a lot of new products here. Again, you're located right on Broad Street. 455 East Broad Street, yes. In that's in downtown Hazelson, so you can stop by or visit them on the website. Next week, we are going to talk about generators, uh, security cameras, and also new heat floor heating systems. That will happen all month here on FYI on Mondays, where we're saving you money. This is FYI News 13 Sports. 
It's going to be a busy sports week with a bunch of meaningful games, so buckle up, sports fans. Tonight in Wilkes-Barre Township, it's Game 4 of the AHL Eastern Conference Semifinals between Manchester and Wilkes-Barre Scranton. The Penguins The Penguins got a 2-1 win in Game number 3 at home to make things interesting. That series now 2 games to 1 in favor of Manchester. The puck drops at 7.05 on Monday. Tuesday is Game 5 at the Mohegan Sun Arena at Casey Plaza at the same time. The Schuylkill League's Softball playoffs start tonight in Orgsburg. Tamaqua, they lost to Pottsville in a playoff for the Schuylkill League Division title, Division 1 title, but they are this year's wild card team in the league playoffs and they'll play Tri Valley. That game was at 3 p.m. Marion, the Division 3 champion, they play Pottsville at 7 p.m. The championship game is set for Wednesday in Orgsburg at 7 p.m. The Schuylkill League baseball playoffs begin on Tuesday at Pine Grove. Blue Mountain and Schuylkill Haven will get things started in the early game. Blue Mountain, the wild card team, Schuylkill Haven is the Division 2 champion. Marion, the Division 3 champions, they play Division 1 champ Pottsville at 7 p.m. The winners of these games will play on Thursday at 7 p.m. in Pine Grove. The Hazleton area Cougar baseball team can wrap up the Wyoming Valley Conference Division 1 championship with a win at Wyoming Valley West on Tuesday. Easier said than done, the Cougars lost to the Spartans earlier this year at home. Right now, the Hazleton area Lady Cougars are in first place in the Wyoming Valley Conference Division 1 standings. Berwick is right behind them, and the two are set to meet this Thursday in Berwick. Penn State Hazleton softball team will play in the USCAA National Softball Championships on Monday. Briar Cliff is the number four seed, Penn State Hazleton the five seed. The number nine seed in this tournament is Penn State Schuylkill. They will play the number eight seed, Berea, on Monday. If they win that one, they will have to play Monday night against number one seed, St. Mary of the Woods. Woods. The Scranton Wilkesbury Rail Riders they beat Indianapolis on Friday and Saturday but lost two to one on Sunday. Russ Kanzler had a big weekend for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs. He was 5 for 7 with 3 doubles, including this one that drove in a run on Friday night. Just missed the home run. The Cunningham Crusher season average is up to 333. Kanzler did not play on Sunday. The Iron Pigs won on Friday night but lost on Saturday and Sunday. And just a reminder, sports here on FYI, brought to you by Sand Springs. And this week at Sand Springs, you can catch out, you can check their golf specials, their specials this week. As always, you can call them at the phone number on your screen, 570-788-5845. Lawrence Peter Yogi Berra. We'll turn 90 tomorrow. Hi, everybody. This is Trivia Treats. 30 years ago today, on May 11, 1985, a flash fire killed 56 people and injured at least 265, many of them children, during a soccer match at Valley Parade in Bradford, England. The official cause of the blaze was a cigarette igniting trash under the stand. The rear exits were padlocked, which contributed to the high death toll. Victims were caught between the burning wooden roof and the burning wooden floor of the 77-year-old structure. Plastic seats were made of flammable polypropylene. The stands were burned to the ground in nine minutes. Exactly 20 years ago in 1995, Indiana Pacers forward Reggie Miller scored eight points in the closing seconds to down the New York Knicks 107-105 in Game 1 of the Eastern Conference semifinals at Madison Square Garden. The Knicks led 105-99 with 18 seconds left before Miller scored the game's final eight points by miraculously hitting two threes and two fouls. A bitter loss for the Knicks. Now by popular demand, another trivia question for you. Who was the first African-American to pitch a no-hitter in the major leagues? Let me give you a, a hint. He always pitched with a toothpick in his mouth. He no-hit the Pirates before a crowd of only 2,918 at Wrigley Field on this day in 1955, exactly 60 years ago. Sam Toothpick Jones walked the first three batters in the ninth inning to load the bases with nobody out. With the tying run at the plate, the Cubs were winning 4-0 at the time. Chicago manager Stank traveled to the mound to converse with Jones, and then he decided to leave him in the game. Jones proceeded to strike out Dick Grote. Roberto Clemente and Frank Thomas, the meat of the Pirates lineup, on 12 pitches to end the game, and the first no-hitter pitched in the bigs by an African-American was in the record book. Sam 
toothpick Jones led the National League in both strikeouts and walks in 1955 and 1956. See you Friday. Till then, be a good sport and stay loose. Mondays can be rough, but you can end them on a high note. Seafood night at Bottlenecks. Choose from crab, clam, shrimp, and lobster specials, such as their Little Neck Clams in Garlic Butter, only $1.95 a dozen, or handmade crab cake platter for only $8.95. Scoreboards on FYI Sports are brought to you by Sand Springs Country Club Golf Course. Summer is here. Get the clubs out of storage and hit the links. Great weekday rates all week long. Seniors golf for $25. Call the Pro Shops for tee times 570-788-5845 extension 1. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. One quick announcement for this evening. St. John the Baptist Byzantine Catholic Church, located at 104 East Birch Street in Lansford, will be selling homemade frozen potato pierogi on Friday, May 22nd. Pickup is from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Cost is $6 per dozen. For more information or to place your order, just call 570-645-5656. That's tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Grace Ellen Bittenbender of Drums, funeral this Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Butler Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pauline D. Bonovich of Freeland, services will be private and under the direction of the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Joseph A. Manick of Tresco, funeral this Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Fiero Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. Evelyn Gabriel, formerly of Hazleton, masses Wednesday at noon in the Most Precious Blood Church, Friends may call Wednesday from 10.30 to noon. The Fiero Funeral Home is assisting the family. William P. Kennedy, formerly of Hazel Township. Funeral is Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. from the Joseph B. Conahan Funeral Home. Friends may call Monday from 4 to 7 p.m. Martha Kuntz, formerly of Hazelton. Funeral is Wednesday at 10 a.m. in the Holy Rosary Church. Friends may call Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. in the church. Arrangements are under the direction of the John J. Pustai Funeral Home. Brianna Ashley Venuza of Hazelton. Services were held Monday under the direction of the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home and John E. Today of Hazleton. Arrangements will be announced by the Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight is Regina Zoba of McAdoo. Regina, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. On Tuesday, it's the District 2 Track and Field Championships. I spent my afternoon talking with a lot of Cougars and Lady Cougars who will be participating in that competition. They were great interviews. Check them out on Tuesday on FYI. Until then, take it easy, everyone.